Hello everyone. Hi Milgrid. So glad to see you. Hello Dr. Swarna. Hello Mahesh. Hello Manoj. So friends, as uh, you all know that this Instagram live is uh, a question answer session uh, where I will try to answer your queries about case taking and uh, we can discuss a lot of things about related to case taking. Uh, most of it will be in English. If somebody wants me to answer something in Hindi, I would be happy to. And uh, let's wait for uh, more people to join in before we uh, start this session. In the meanwhile, if you have any questions related to case taking that you would like me to answer, you can post them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. I'll, I'll take note of them. If somebody wants to uh, join the Insta Live to ask a question, even that is, uh, even for that, they are welcome. All right, so before we begin, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, we have recently announced a course on case taking at uh, the Master Homeopathy Academy where uh, six Master Homeopathy teachers, uh, including me, one of them is me, are going to teach six different approaches on case taking. Uh, is there anyone in the audience today who has joined this course? Nobody? All right. So uh, this course is about how to use different approaches. We have a classical homeopathy approach. We have sensation method. Uh, we have a mind approach or Segel's approach. And uh, we have a uh, approach, uh, we have a couple of HRI approach, approach and how, even a therapeutic approach, how we can bring together all these approaches to solve difficult cases. That is what this whole course is about. So if you have not yet joined the course, uh, I invite you all to join this course and uh, now let's begin this session. So the whole idea of case taking, Hahnemann has given the details about case taking in aphorism 83 to 104. But the gist of case taking, the process of case taking or what is important for case taking is given much, much before that. And that is given in aphorism number five. So if you want to learn case taking, if you want to master case taking, the first thing that you want to understand is what's written in the aphorism number five. So let's read aphorism number five and aphorism number five states, states that useful to the physician in ascertaining, in assisting him to cure are the particulars of the most probable exciting causes of the acute disease. So when you have an acute disease, the one thing that you need to figure out, the one thing that you need to find out is what is the exciting cause for this acute disease. And the whole process of case taking should be centered around that in an acute case. For example, we all know uh, that in aconite, we say that in aconite, a person falls ill when uh, there is exposure to dry cold wind. A pulsatilla can get sick by eating rich food or by entering warm room. 
The bryonia can get sick by change of temperature. A Nakswamika can get sick by sitting on a cold pavement. An arsenic elk can get sick by eating stale food. So we know that these are the exciting causes of an acute disease. So in an acute case, the whole case taking is centered around what is it that has deranged the vital force suddenly. That derangement we need to figure out. And the whole idea of case taking is let's try to find out what is peculiar at this point of time in the case and what has led to this derangement of vital force. And in this process we need to sometimes uh, I have a large pediatric practice and in pediatric cases what we need to do often we not we need to do is that the parents will often come that the child has coughed the child has fever or the child has caught an infection uh, from the other children in the school but then you ask there are 50 30 40 students in this class why are they not all sick why is this particular child sick why is this particular child get uh, catching an infection why this child is complaining of pain in abdomen recurring pain in abdomen and not most of the other children in the class and that is where the process of case taking begins trying to understand why this particular child has fallen sick in the same atmosphere so the telluric uh, atmosphere is same but the other children have not fallen sick. That means there is some individuality in that child that predisposes that child to falling sick. So on one hand, we need to figure out what is the PQR is in the case right now. The modalities are important. The uh, symptoms which are very strong, they are important. It's not this. We at times even need to focus on the common symptoms. Because the common symptoms sometimes give you an indication of what remedy the patient might need. For example, it is very common for children to develop redness of face in fever. Now, if we know that the face is red, okay, so there are many remedies, but the one remedy that comes immediately to our mind is belladonna. There is flushing of face. Even calcarea has that in fever, but calcarea in later stages has more paleness uh, than flushing. Uh, so if there is a lot of flushing of face, there is redness of face, even, if, even though it's a common symptom, it can indicate a remedy like belladonna. But the moment there is flushing only on one side, there is only on one side it could indicate and the other side is not flushed, then it could indicate another remedy like Sina or Chamomilla. Similarly, if there is flushing of face and at the same time there is flushing of nose also, it might indicate a remedy like Osimum Sanctum, a very good remedy for acute viral fevers. Now, so the whole idea is that the observation is very important. In acute cases, the patient's observation is very, very important. Uh, how the physician observes, how the child is behaving, what are the child's energy levels, what are the food cravings of the child. And this is very important because uh, the one mistake that I often see uh, doctors making homeopaths making is that when the child comes to you in an acute stage the physician often asks the parent what is it that the child likes to eat but this is a wrong question because what the child usually likes to eat or what the child usually craves is not what we are seeking in an acute case. What we are looking for is what 
has the child asked for since the acute disease has begun? जब से बीमारी शुरू हुई तब से क्या खाने का मन कर रहा है बच्चे का दैट इज वॉट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड दैट इज वॉट वी नीड टू आस्क ऑल्सो कि सिंस द अक्यूट कंप्लेंट हैज बिगन वॉट इज इट दैट द चाइल्ड हैज क्रेट वॉट इज इट दैट द चाइल्ड हैज आस्क फॉर और वॉट इज वॉट इज इट दैट द चाइल्ड हैज हैप्पीली ईटन बिकॉज वेन द चाइल्ड इज सेक द मॉम विल गिव the child many things will offer the child many things but what is it that the child ate happily we should always remember that uh homeo mitra is asking two different children in the same family with exact same symptoms but same remedy don't work in acute illness example cold cough fever and vomiting no difference at all so i believe uh, uh homeomitra your question is that there are two children in the same family with exactly the same symptoms but the same remedy doesn't work so like one child is work uh, get recovers but the other child doesn't respond to the same remedy i personally feel is that this happens only because uh there is some fault in the individualization what happens is that we assume that both the children are in the same family they have very similar symptoms let's try to give them the same remedy but uh do we diligently take both cases independently that is what the question is do we try to find out if there are any differences between the two children so this sometimes uh it is usually our fault and not the fault of the medicine that we are not able to find the right remedy okay now tell me who wants to ask me a question anybody who wants to come live sajda parveen wants to come live let's see if sajda has a question similimum is asking if physical general and mental general characteristics should be considered and individualized on the basis of it uh my personal take is that in an acute case you should not merge physical generals the chronic picture should not be combined with the acute picture even hanneman has written very very clearly that uh the chronic should be uh the acute case should be taken separately in most cases it's not necessary that you merge the acute case and the chronic symptoms the chronic physical generals and the mental generals it is what hanneman has written is that it is the change in the disposition that is important so what is important is not what is the chronic disposition of the child that is not important the child is very mild nature okay that's good but what is how is the child now since the big uh, acute has begun if the child is irritable and cranky uh, during that you stay then the mild child the mild remedy of uh, carcinosin or calcarea uh, won't work what we are looking for is a remedy that can produce irritability in during sickness so probably chamomilla probably magnesium carb probably sina from probably tuberculinum we don't know but Uh, even naxomica it is always the change in the disposition that needs to be noted all right let's see yogesh wants to ask something let's see if yogesh is here yes yogesh Yogesh go ahead ask your question uh, we could not get yogesh
All right, Shubham is there. Let's see if Shubham wants, wants to ask something. You can post your questions in the comments also. It's not necessary that you come live on video. If you want to ask any questions related to case taking, you can ask me. Uh, let's discuss more of uh, pediatric case taking. Now, in children again, the one thing that is very, very peculiar uh, and what I have seen is of very, very import, great, great importance is uh, the food desires and aversions. Because what happens is that oftentimes, uh, Divya is asking how to write duration of each symptom in a chronic case. Okay, I'll come to your question, Divya. And Maheshwari is asking, tips on treating dermal cases, especially in collecting symptoms. Okay, so let me, before you ask any more questions, let me answer these two questions. So, uh, the use of, how do you write the duration of each symptom? In chronic cases, the idea is that you always write, what Hanneman has done is, Hanneman has given you instructions that when you start writing the uh, case, you note down the symptoms of the patient verbatim, that means the, exactly in the words and the language of the patient. And you leave a couple of lines after each symptom so that when the, and you do not try to complete the symptom as and when the patient has, is speaking about it. What you have to do is, when you are writing the case, the patient says, suppose the patient says, oh, I have, sir, I've got a headache. You write down headache. Then he says, my nose is also blocked. You leave two lines, you write noses blocked. Then you the, ask, let the patient ask, uh, what else? What do you generally ask? You keep quiet. If the patient is able to say something more, okay. If the patient is not able to say something more, then you ask, what more? What else? And then you keep prodding for more information. And once the patient has given all the information that is, that he or she is able to give spontaneously, then you come back to each symptom and then you try to complete each symptom. For example, okay, tell me more about your headache now. Since when do you have this headache? How does the headache feel? What is the location of the headache? Then you try to complete the location, sensation, modalities and concomitant of each symptom, each symptom in the acute phase. And that is how you write in acute, even in chronic cases, the same approach remains. You write down after every symptom, you leave a couple of lines so that you can complete those symptoms after the patient has spontaneously said whatever they had to say. The golden rule of case taking is never interrupt the patient. Give them as much silence as possible. As much silence as possible. Because if you speak a lot, the patient will never open up. You need to give them this space so that the patient can feel comfortable, patient can feel relaxed, and the patient opens up. So these are, uh, then somebody asked a question about, uh, I have a child who is 1.5 Akshit. Akansha Mittal is asking, I have a child who is 1.5 months old and is crying a lot. So how will I, will, will I give medicine? Akansha, now the 1.5 month old child doesn't, cannot say anything. So there are two things that you need to understand. There one thing is you need to take the history of the mother also. Because if the child is breastfeeding, then oftentimes what the mother has eaten or the mental state of the mother affects the breastfeeding child. For example, it is written in colosynthesis uh, that the child gets a, an attack of colic 
after the about of anger in mother so it is the mother who gets angry and feeds the ch child and the child gets scolded so the mental state of the mother also needs to be taken into consideration what the mother has eaten in the last one or two days that also needs to be taken into consideration in young children and then comes the modality you also need to understand the energy level of the child there are no go, not going to be any food cravings but the appetite loss of appetite and can be there if there is no loss of appetite there are other rest, one set of remedies and there is if there is loss of appetite then there is another set of remedies then you need to see the overall countenance of the child is the child active is the child uh, very dull because if the child is dull then you need to select a dull remedy if the child is active then you know that uh, you do you do not need a dull remedy there you do not need a remedy that has a lot of dullness in it uh, similarly you then you need to look at the child also is there how is the child reacting for example if the child is cry, crying is the child taking the hand to the ears or the head or is the child folding the legs because that folding of the legs can be a sign of symptom of uh, chamomile chamomile or colosynthesis then you also need to look at uh, the character of the stool has the child vomited so this is how you build a totality it's not easy for uh, such a small child but then you need to be very very diligent in asking these questions in observing the child in observing the mother and asking the mother uh, the image history of her own self and that is how you build the history in majority of cases the good thing is that the children uh, younger the children respond very very quickly to homeopathic medicines uh, so oftentimes if the child is crying in your clinic and you know what remedy the child needs you give them a dose and make the child wait in your uh, waiting area for 15 minutes and if your remedy is right the child will stop crying right then and right then. this is how quickly the medicine works if your remedy is right okay uh, Suhana Fatima is asking what is the use of philosophies in practical case taking uh, Suhana there is the whole idea is that without philosophy you cannot practice if you feel what is organ and organ is nothing but philosophy but within that philosophy are the ground rules of practice if you do not understand the theory you cannot practice also it's the philosophies uh, I'm not sure what philosophies you are asking but I'm, uh, but I'm assuming the different approaches uh, like Ken's philosophy uh, so they have different approaches you can approach different cases using different philosophies for example there is a, a repertorial approach of Kent and there's another repertorial approach uh, of Boga Bonigasen so if you know the philosophy of these two people how they approach different cases then you know in which particular case which kind of repertory is more useful how to take a case to suit a particular repertory and how to solve a case using a particular repertory which is based on a particular philosophy so Swana so is very very important and then those philosophy also lay the ground rules of uh, how to take the case for example if you are uh, if you join the course that we have recently launched at uh, the Master Homeopathy Academy, uh, which is academy.drbhatia.com, you will see there are, there are going to be set two sessions on the ICR approach. Now, the ICR approach is a very, very strong approach rooted in uh, fundamentals of homeopathy, classical fundamentals of homeopathy, but in a way which makes the results replicate. So it's a philosophy, but then it has some practical set, practical tools, practical guidelines using which you can solve those cases, many, many cases. So yes, philosophy is very, very important. Uh, Maheshwari Yadav is asking, so can you give any tips on treating dermal cases, especially in collecting symptoms? Okay, so Maheshwari, what I would 
give you from my experiences that what happens is the dermal patients often which are of very long standing uh, they often appear as one-sided cases one-sided means that the patient will come with a localized lichen planus patch or a localized vitiligo patch or a localized dermatitis patch and you try to take the rest of the case and the patient will not give you much history as if there is nothing now what Hanneman has said in those cases especially in the cases which appear like one-sided there are cases which are going to give you a lot of information the, those cases are easier to solve but in cases where you are not able to find a lot of history what Hanneman has said is that these one-sided cases are never one-sided they appear one-sided and in these cases all you need to do is you need to ask the patient all the symptoms at the beginning of the disease and the second aspect is uh, again like there is an hhf approach or the segal approach the mind approach again we are going to cover that mind approach also in this uh, case taking course sometimes even if you are not able to get the right information uh, in terms of the totality of symptoms how the patient experiences the disease and what the patient speaks about that disease in what words the patient is defining his or her complaints how the patient is reacting to his complaint uh, knowingly unknowingly you can take those words and convert them into rubrics and that can help you solve the case another approach is a sensation method where you forget about the disease and you try to understand the core sensation or the core delusion of the case and uh, you solve the case at a much deeper level so there, there are many different approaches there are no fixed tips on treating dermal cases all cases are treated in the same way you do need some special techniques for pediatric cases and geriatric cases uh, but as far as case taking is concerned you do not need any special approach the general approach for all cases work in uh, skin cases also the one thing that i would like to say is that if you take a lot of local symptoms of in skin cases uh, you are going to palliate or suppress and what the patient is going to do is patient is going to feel better for a short while and then your remedy will stop working and then you'll try to increase the dose you'll try to give another remedy you'll try to give multiple remedies you'll try to give something local but the patient will not improve in in skin cases uh, in majority of skin cases you need very little medication you need the body to heal uh, you need the what bo you need to give the body time to heal if you bombard the body with too much medication in uh, skin cases, they usually show a lot of aggravation. So be cautious there. What else? Do we have any more questions? All right, so no more questions right now. You're free to ask more questions. So oh, somebody wants to join in. Hina Begum wants to join in. Let's see if she has a question. Okay, so uh, let's see. Hello. Yes, Dr. Hina, do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. Just a moment.
Okay, so the question uh, from Div134 is that the small remedies help in practice or polycrest is enough. Uh, Div, there are no small remedies. There are no small remedies. There are only remedies that you know less about and we know less about. The remedy per se is not sell. The, the remedy is less proved and the less used, but that doesn't make the remedy small. For example, a remedy like Tucrium Marum Verum. It is considered a small remedy, but it has number of symptoms. There are so many remedies which have number of symptoms, but we don't know them. So at times, I personally feel there are no small remedies. Either the remedy is a similimum or not the similimum. Can you practice with a handful of remedies, the polycrest remedies, the 40, 50 remedies? Yes, you can practice. There are a lot of homeopaths who practice, but then you will only have results in 40, 50 percent cases. If you want better results, if you more, want more curative results, then you need a larger, uh, larger group of remedies. I, I don't want to say that you need 4,000 remedies. No, that's not required. But you still need, in my personal opinion, a good understanding of 300, 400 remedies uh, to practice uh, in a very, very confident way. What else do we have? Any more questions? Okay. Uh, matridonal remedies. Unfortunately, this Insta Live is not about Matira Medica, it's more about case taking. So I'm not going to speak about matridonal remedies uh, today. Divya is asking, can we write his duration of symptoms from history of complaints? Yes, of course. The duration of symptom is always from the history of complaints. You cannot imagine the duration. Ultimately, what the patient tells you, uh, you have to go by it. Amen is asking about repetition of doses. Again, Amen, this is not an uh, Insta Live about osology. Uh, this is more about case taking. So let's talk about more about case taking. How do you take, what, what are the difficulties that you people face during case taking? Where do you feel that you fail or you get stuck? What are the cases that you find difficult to solve? Ask questions related to those. We all have difficult cases there. We all are students. We all are students. So in the process of taking a case. OK, we have got one more question by Div134. Can we go with conflict approach in the cases for particular site like skin and liver? I don't know what is in conflict approach. Can you? Enlighten us, Div 134. What is a conflict approach? I have no idea, Div. Maybe you can elaborate and then I'll be able to answer this. So, uh, yeah. So we all find, I'll share my journey with uh, you regarding my journey and how I improved my case taking. So what happened was that when I was a student, oh, we have a question, sir, in physical symptoms, how can we select the medicine? Look, uh, Hina, you can select medicine based on any symptom that it's not necessary that you need mental symptoms in every case. You can select uh, medicine on the basis of physical symptoms. Also, in fact, physical symptoms are very important in acute cases, especially even in chronic cases. There are a lot of physical symptoms that are very important. Do not a good similimum. A good similimum will always cover both the mental as well as the physical symptoms. Otherwise, your prescription is very one-sided. If you are prescribing only on the mental sides and your remedy is not covering the physical aspect of the case, then your remedies, your prescription is one-sided. 
So, uh, yeah, and there are cases where you won't find any mental symptoms or you will not be able to elicit any mental symptoms and you only have physical symptoms to prescribe. You can definitely prescribe, but make sure that when you are prescribing on the basis of physical symptoms, try to complete those symptoms in terms of duration, location, sensation, modality, and concomitance. If you have this, then in majority of cases, you can reach the correct symptom. Okay, Maheshwari is again asking a question, cases which come with diagnosis, for example, diabetes or hypertension, and they don't give any complaints except report. So Maheshwari, that is the whole idea of case taking. The patient usually comes with the disease. Patient doesn't know that we have a process to understand the disease. It is as a homeopath, it is my responsibility to make the patient understand that uh, the disease is what what the disease we have come to me is just a uh, end result of the disease process. It is not the whole disease. It is the end result of the disease process. So when it is an end result of the disease process, you need to understand that the whole process needs to be understood. So the patient is unaware. The patient is ignorant that they do not understand that they come to you with an allopathic mindset they, as, as they go to an allopathic doctor that doctor I've got hypertension, got doctor I've got hypothyroid, doctor I've got diabetes. But then it is you in your head that you need to take that disease away, out. No, okay, let's not talk about the disease. Let's talk about you. Tell me everything that has happened to you. Since when do you have this complaint? How did this complaint start? What was happening in your life when this complaint started? What were the factors in your life? Uh, what was your home situation like? What was your life situation like? What was your work situation like? Try to understand this, this whole area of his life. Uh, try to understand all the stress factors that the patient has had since childhood. And in many cases, you will need to ask you will need to ask in every case, but in many cases, you, your prescription will be based on the family history. Because the prescription, the problem is starting right from the family. Now, is not the patient has not acquired the predisposition in, in this lifetime all by himself. So we need to take the patient. To, it, it, this is the whole art. This is the whole art of case taking. How do you open up these cases? How do you open up these cases which come to you with, oh, doctor, I've got a headache, I've got a pain, abdomen, I've got a tuberculosis, I've got a pneumonia, and then you individualize, whether it's an acute case or a chronic case. This is all the whole idea of case taking. So if you are stuck at this level, if you are not able to open up these cases, if you find it difficult to go beyond the name of the disease, then I strongly invite you, I strongly urge you to take up this course. It's a very, very uh, nominally priced course. We are going to learn case taking from six world renowned teachers. Uh, all of them have like 20, 30 years of clinical experience. They are all going to show live cases, video cases, paper cases, not just theory, but a lot of practical training would be there and all different approaches so that you will know, okay, I can approach the case this way also. I can ask this question also. I can solve a stuck case in this manner also. What to do if a patient is not asking any question, is not answering any question? How do I solve that case? How do I solve a pediatric case? We have got a very interesting two sessions by Dr. Dinesh Chauhan only on pediatric cases. So this, the, this whole art, this is what we are trying to teach. Uh, and if you are stuck at this level where you find it difficult to solve pediatric cases, if you want to find it difficult to solve cases where there's gross pathology, I invite you all to join this uh, new course that we have come up with. Uh, the link is academy.drbhatia.com. Uh, we can post the link uh, in the comment section. Okay, so this is the whole idea. Let's see if we have any more questions. Oh, Dev, now I understand the conflict approach, the German new medicine that I know about. Uh, so, Dev, 
what you are mentioning about the German new medicine approach, yes, you can use it. There's no harm. There are a couple of people who use it. Basically, what we are using in that approach is that we are using, again, ailments from. So it is an ailments from approach, but it has got some uh, further granular uh, divisions in that. But you are free to use if you are good at using it. If you have learned it from somebody who has used it, then sure you can use it. It's a it's an approach of tasting. It's an another approach of tasting. All right. Anything else? I'll take one more question before we uh, end this Insta live. We wanted it to be just for uh, thirty minutes, but we have already gone above our time schedule. All right, so I assume there are no more questions, and uh, we'll do another Insta Live soon. I, I'll do another Insta Live on matronatal remedies, uh, another Insta Live on postology. Somebody has asked questions on postology, how to use potencies. But again, that is uh, not in today's ambit. Uh, we, we'll do cover these topics some other time. Uh, yeah, so that's it. It was wonderful having this session with you i hope you liked it i look forward to your feedback and uh, if you have any more questions that you want me to answer uh you can send them to me at manish at the rate hpethy.com my email id is m-a-n-i-s-h at the rate hpethy.com and i'll try to answer your queries in another insta live uh, or you can dm also and you can dm us also and uh, yes, uh, if you want to learn more about case taking, I invite you all uh, to the new course that we've launched at academy.drpatia.com. Look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.